let's see. Okay. So this particular microphone is made up of all these layers. So just like before, I'm just going to select the top with the shift key, leave the background alone, and go to new group from layers. Go ahead and I have two of them on here, so I'm just going to give it a title of microphone two. Click OK. So this is the image. And just to simplify it, I'm going to duplicate it. You don't have to do this, but then that would merge the group. So now it's just a, a layer that has the microphone on it. So I'm just going to go behind this part. Um, just to show it to you, I'm going to go to set the to make the canvas bigger. Here's the canvas size. And you can see it's pretty big already, 22 by 11. <clears throat> so I just make it 26 just to get the enough space to do the cable coming across. Here's the background with the new layer. I'll just give it a uh, option to lead of that. Take this background, try to get a little bit of a at least a gradient into it. So I have this one saved. I'm just going to come back just to a foreground background. You can see it's light to dark. So I'm going to just separate a little bit. So at least it has a little bit of a separation for it. <clears throat> and that's all in one layer. It can still be dark as I go, but I'll just keep it for there. So here's the microphone. I'm just going to tilt it. The ruler guide at the head of the microphone, so now I can use that. I can set the point of rotation right where that is, so it'll rotate right away from there. Just so it's setting on the surface like so. Go ahead and click OK. And just duplicate it. And the bottom one is the one that's going to be underneath it. So just go to Edit, Transform, and do it vertical. And just hold the Shift key down to drop it down itself like that. Now the microphone isn't going to be exactly on the edge. It's actually going to be tucked up underneath it just to give it a little more realism to it. This, this is going to be the reflection, so I'll just give it a title for that. And the gradient mask is right here, so I'll put a copy of that. Take the gradient tool, choose the gradient and the gradient editor from foreground to transparent. Just reset the uh, foreground to background here for this one. I have it in reverse, so I just have to turn that off if that's getting me that. And just shift key it. It should be on a horizontal. And you can see it's fading away. I'll go the opposite direction. And it's fading itself into the blue a little bit more. A little easier. So there's a quick easy reflection. That go above it and get a new layer, layer and just put chord. Let's put C right there. Take the path. And with the pen tool, just click in the end of the cable and just kind of make a cable that comes across. I'm going to have it overlap itself and come off the page. In the paths, you need to save it, so I'm just going to double-click on it and save it as cord. I have a layer and a path, so two of them I just toggle back before. So depending on the color of this, I can make it uh, another color. I'll give it a... I'll keep it a red-purple here. So what you have is this path. Down below, here's the fill, so it fills the end point. You don't want that one. <clears throat> the path goes through it, and you take a look at your brush. So I'll click on the brush, go up at the top here, choose a hard edge brush, make it a little bit bigger. Cap locks is going to let me see it, so that's the scale to it. So I'm going to use the brackets to make it a little bit larger. So it's going to be that color. So why it's there, just go to the second icon, which is going to stroke that path right down the middle. I'm going to zoom into it. Now I'm going to shade it. So I take the brush and get a soft brush. And come back here and see, okay, that's, that's pretty good. That's the soft edge. So I'm going to pick a very much darker purple and do the same thing. Stroke that on there. Maybe that's too, too dark. I stroke it onto that piece. I can hit it again, and I'll darken it, but I'm also going to do one thing. I'm going to go on the layers, and why this layer is here, I'm going to click on lock the pixels, so now it's only going to be 
where that piece is. So when I do the path, it'll stay within that range. And I click it again, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and let it follow along that, make it bracket a little bit smaller and just keep hitting it. Get an even darker value, make the bracket a little bit smaller for the brush. You can see it kind of coming across there. And then I can, once I have that dark value, it's going to be the base tone, then I can get a lighter purple over the top and that'll give me the, the edge I'm looking for. So whether I keep it a soft edge brush or if I decide to come back in with the hard edged color, you can kind of see what's happening when you when you work with that that piece. So I can continue to lay that dark side over the top. And then kind of, so you're kind of shading as you go from one to the next. So there it is. So now I have the bracket. Make it smaller. I'll zoom in so you can see a little better. Get a brighter color there. Make that bracket a little bit smaller so it decreases the brush size. And then you're trying to paint in a highlight there. For it. So now you have this cable and it kind of sets itself up. So I'm going to deselect the path and it's going to cover over here with a shadow. So I want to um, click on this layer. This, it's just the pixels that are locked, so I'm okay. And I want this one to go over the top. Okay, so I can pick on that color, and take the brush, and kind of paint over it. Okay, it won't go over this edge, but it will go in this edge, so you just have to watch yourself or take a polygon tool and just kind of close that part off. So now when you, and you can hide that and take the brush, make it a little bigger, and blend that, blend that color in a little bit. So it's just kind of working over the top edge of this. Okay, you can smudge it, you can smear it, you can do a couple things with it. The part that has the cast shadow, so I'm going to deselect <clears throat> and do the same thing. Take a tool like this, you can see it's not perfect, so I'm going to try the pen tool. And that way I can click and click and just draw that so it's much more accurate. Come up under here, go to the edge of that cable, and make the curve that wraps around this piece. And remember, option is going to give you a corner point. So while that's a path, I go to the paths palette, third one over is going to be selections, then go back to the layer. I can go to view, hide, or command H, hides that edge, take the brush, and now you can see it's acting like a shadow. So I'm going to take the opacity down, <clears throat> reset it, and make the brush much bigger. And you can see it kind of gives that edge for that shadow, so the cable looks as if it's cut off on the top there. Okay. And I should have changed my spacing. I got a little bit of a, a ridge coming across there. So this cable's going across. Maybe I want it to go under on this one. So I'll take the pen tool again. This time I'm going to create the whole section here. Doesn't matter if it's a curved yet. Curve for that one. So that becomes a selection. And keep in mind I'll save this one just to show you. It's a default setting, but here's the uh, here's the brush for it. I'm going to hide it so I don't have the edges. Take the eyedrop tool, click on this part with a brush, and just hold the shift key down and have it go back and forth to fix that piece up. So now it's just going across that way. Get the eyedrop tool for this one. Go for the brush, make it a little bit smaller. A little bigger there. It's kind of letting me illustrate that piece coming across. And do the same for this one. Make it a little bit bigger. And that gives you that piece going across it. And you can do the same thing, kind of flip it over. Here's the selection. 
and I can go to select inverse. So now this part is selected over here. And then I can just take the, the brush default to black. And I can just hand draw the shadow in like that. And I'll give it that feel to it. And just hide it from there. So that gives you a little bit of the cable. I have a little touch up to do on that part, but you can kind of get the idea. And then for the reflection of this cord, again, here's this part, so I can always take the actual microphone. Here's the piece in front of it. Just click on that section that's there, make sure this part's highlighted, and just take the eraser tool. And you can just take that section out pretty easily on there. Just make sure you're on the right part. You can also just bring this part in front of it like that, so in case you want to add to it. But for the reflection on this part for the cable, just duplicate the layer. Take the top one, make sure auto select is off, and just drop it down beneath itself to get it started. And just change the opacity to get it set up there. <coughs> This part has <coughs> this selection, so you can take a selection of it right there and just go to Filter Liquify. It'll take you into a secondary menu, but it'll be under that piece. So here it is. You can kind of adjust it to bend down like this. So it'll this so give you that selection coming down. So take a look, see if you can uh, manipulate that section for it. <clears throat> 